Hey everybody, Home Slash Center here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a powerful climbing team in the Open Master League, centered around what I believe to be the best current meta core breaker, and that is Tapu Bulu. The rise of the Rhyperior meta has led to a lot of people trying to win water types like Kyogre and Primarina to beat Rhyperior. And you know what beats all of those? Tapu Bulu. Tapu Bulu running Bullet Seed, Nature's Madness, and your choice of Grass Knot or Solar Beam is an amazing core breaker. I paired it up with Palkia and my own Rhyperior and had very positive sets. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches and take a look at Tapu Bulu in the Open Master League. And we're off to an amazing start in game number one, Tapu Bulu being led into a Palkia. Opponent safe switches Xerneas, which is absolutely absurd considering that Ho-Oh exists. But unfortunately, I don't have a Ho-Oh to punish this safe switch. So I'm just gonna bring in Rhyperior. Opponent is gonna go for the Moonblast and then fire off a close combat. But I'm more than happy to shield up with the Rhyperior. As I know, my Rhyperior is gonna be able to output a tremendous amount of damage onto the Palkia. I will fire off the Breaking Swipe just to fish for that 50% chance at an attack drop. Breaking Swipe is going to connect, and now I'm going to look to try and knock it out with a Rock Wrecker. Rock Wrecker should just about KO opponent, is going to let it through in the back, is their own Rhyperior. They have the Shadow, so they were running ABA weak to that Tapu Bulu, and Tapu Bulu is now poised ready to strike. Firing off the Nature's Madness, opponent is going to commit the shield. The bad news for the opponent is the defense is only going to get debuffed more and more. I will commit the shield as the opponent does go for the Rock Wrecker. I'm going to farm up, switch into the Palkia to catch the Rock Wrecker, and that will just instantly be game over. As the opponent has no way of getting through my remaining Palkia health, so they will resign the match. We've got another water lead in the next match, leading Tapu Bulu into Kyogre. Opponent is going to safe switch into Zacian, and I'm more than happy to Nature's Madness and then send in Rhyperior. Most Zacian are not running close combat. Wild Church player off offers tremendous coverage against most things in the meta. However, it does make Zacian a lot worse against Rhyperior. And since they're running play rough and Wild Charge, I can actually tank two play roughs, fully farm down, and exit with energy that can threaten just about anything in the meta. It doesn't matter what's getting brought in here, I'm going to be firing off the Rock Wrecker. It is going to be the Kyogre re-entering the field of play. Rock Wrecker will connect. I'm expecting that my opponent is going to switch out. And I have two answers to the Kyogre, so I'm more than happy just to bring in the Tapu Bulu, because if they switch out into another fairy, I'm ahead by a turn, and I can deny a full sneak. So Nature's Madness is going to connect, and from here, I have a very clear path to victory. Whether they bait or not, I just have to play the ones. They end up baiting with the close combat, but as long as I play the ones, I can get enough debuff supplied that once I bring in Palkia, it's going to force them to switch out into Kyogre, and Kyogre is completely helpless against Palkia. There's nothing that it can do. So at this point, the game is immediately over. I bring in Palkia. They have to switch out to reset the debuffs. And Kyogre is just so helpless against Palkia. Palkia gonna fully farm down. At this point, there's no win con for the opponent remaining. Opponent still trying to play this out despite all of my energy. So I'm gonna fire off a cheeky spatial rend at the end of this game to knock out Xerneas with double resistant damage and take the win. In. Hopping into the next match, Tapu Bulu into another Kyogre. People are really trying to hard counter these Rhyperiors. Opponent safe switches into a Primarina, and this looks to be a Kyogre double charm team. I will fire off the Nature's Madness. Opponent actually ends up no shielding, and since they no shield, I'm just going to one shield farm down here. Because I get to exit with a tremendous amount of energy, and I can put my Palkia on the Kyogre and Rhyperior on what's almost assuredly a Togekiss as their final Pokemon. You don't save switch a Charmer unless you are going to have a second Charmer in the back. I thought about going for the Solar Beam, and it turns out I should have gone for that Solar Beam as my opponent ends up no shielding. I fire off another Nature's Madness. They're going to let it go. In comes Palkia. I get to snipe them down, and in the back is Togekiss. I'm in a good spot here. I'm going to fire off an Aqua Tail. Whether they shield or not, Rhyperior can just win the twos. They end up shielding, and Rhyperior just crushes in the ones. So the twos gets a little bit uncomfortable. The ones is a guaranteed win. The only win con my opponent has is trying to call a bait. They do just that, but as the Rhyperior, I'm never going to bait there. We move to the next match, Tapu Bulu versus Landorus. Again, we're running into Pokemon after Pokemon that people are trying to use to potentially hard counter Rhyperior. And Tapu Bulu just beats all of the stuff that beats Rhyperior. Opponent is able to land the Stone Edge. 
Here, I'm gonna farm to 100 and I'm gonna full send the solar beam. A lot of people don't like to shield the first move because Nature's Madness has a debuff. So we're just gonna pick up a one hit KO with the solar beam. I farm up to the solar beam. They have to respect this. They've seen the damage, so this is a safe bait for me. They end up calling it and I don't get to another Nature's Madness. So a massive misplay on my part. I should have just full sent the solar beam, but I thought that I could get to double Nature's Madness. They're gonna go for double close combat. I tank one, I'm gonna shield one, and it will all come down to what they have in the back, and they have a Veltal in the back, and this is looking to be a very difficult game. I'm gonna bait here. Rockwrecker is very threatening, so they will commit the shield. I do not get the debuff, but this, unfortunately, is going to be a very tricky endgame. Had I just landed a solar beam on my opponent's Xerneas, I could have been in a better spot, but now, this Xerneas, I think, is just going to be too healthy, and the switch timers are misaligned. So the Aqua Tail is going to land. They're going to be able to force the final shield, and then their switch clock is up, and mine is not. So they can bring in the Xerneas. Xerneas still too healthy. I'm forced to fire off my energy. Aqua Tail is going to be shielded. Quick switch to Rhyperior. That's going to force their energy, and I have to try and Dragon Breath down a Fairy type and exit with a move. In comes Palkia. I just cannot farm down and we lose by a very narrow margin. Picking up a decent lead in the next match, Tapu Bulu versus Xerneas. Xerneas, of course, would be absolute game ending if my Palkia got aligned to it, so I'm just gonna stay in. I decide to overfarm here a little bit. You can pretty safely just Nature's Madness right when you get it. I overfarm because I was debating whether to full send a beam or go straight for the Madness, but I remembered that I win zero straight Madness, so there wasn't really a point in going for the beam. So I will fire off Nature's Madness number two, and my opponent is just gonna let this go. They bring out Landorus. I'm gonna make the Nature's Madness. My opponent makes the Sandseer at the same time and denies my energy by winning charge attack priority. But now I have the alignment that I'm looking for. Opponent switches into Palkia, and I'll be honest, I froze for a little bit there. The moment I saw Palkia, as long as I switch in Rhyperior within three turns, Rhyperior could just win twos, and then I'm in a one position. But now things are a little bit tricky as clocks are misaligned. I am going to go for a double shield and a farm down with the Rhyperior just to try and leave with quite a bit of energy. Since I was able to successfully bait in the Palkia Mirror, I'm not too far off in Aqua Tail. Opponent is going to bring in the Landorus and I will go for the bait. If they call this, I'm in a really tough spot, but Landos love to shield. I make it to the Rock Wrecker. Rock Wrecker. Unfortunately, I lose charge stack priority, but the Sandshear Storm will not KO as I'm now gonna be able to connect with a debuffed Rock Wrecker. Quick switch back into the Palkia. I can make the Aqua Tail, but by the time I get there, I can just farm them down. So that's game over. Tabu Bulu versus Meloetta in the next match. Meloetta, not a Pokemon that I'm familiar with the matchup of, but Meloetta's stats are absolutely absurd, so I'm pretty confident this is just not going to be a good matchup for the Tabu Bulu. Meloetta will go for the Psy Shock. Psy Shock is going to inflict some solid damage. I'm going to bring in Palkia. Out comes Primarina, and I shouldn't have aggressively switched out. Palkia... Very strong as a pivot into most fairy types, but if they send out a Charm Primarina, you just can't do anything here, which is really, really unfortunate. Primarina is going to exit this matchup with a lot of energy as well. I think my best bet is just to bring in Rhyperior, shield a Hydro Cannon, and fully commit to a farm down, as energy on Rhyperior can go a very long way against most teams. So I will get a very nice farm down. I'm pretty close to a rock wrecker if they decide to bring in Meloetta, but they do not. They send in Dialga. I fire off the breaking swipe. It's not going to do a lot of damage. It does actually get the attack drop, which is quite nice. And then I'm just going to look for a shield and a full farm down. They're going to be switching out of here. And this end game will be a very tricky one as I'm down two shields. I will bait with a breaking swipe, hoping to try and pick up a shield. Opponent is going to call the bait. I do get the attack drop though. And that attack drop is very, very helpful helpful. Psyshock is going to connect. My Rhyperior is very low. I easily have enough for the Rock Wrecker. At this point, they have to start shielding something. They keep calling baits. No. And I'm suddenly realizing that they're just going to save two shields for that Dialga and they can win. And I throw a Mud Slap before I switch and that loses me the game instantly. Had I not thrown the Mud Slap, had I instead immediately switched, I could have outpaced the two Nature's Madness, forced both shields, and with the defense at minus two, the Mud Slap would have KO'd. So even despite my misplays, I had a win con in this match, but I didn't see it until I had already clicked the Mud Slap, and I just don't have the health on Rhyperior. 
So that's one of the few losses that I had with the team. And honestly, that one felt like operator error more than the team letting me down. Tabo Bulu versus Tabo Bulu. I do have the best buddy badge finished on my the top of Bulu, but I was actually running best buddy equipped on the Palkia for these battles. But considering how weak the backline is to an opposing top of Bulu, in the future, I might honestly run it on the Bulu just because you really need to guarantee charge tech priority in the mirror. Here, I do get a bit of good luck. I win the coin flip twice in the mirror, and I'm just gonna let it go at this point because I don't think it's likely I'm gonna win it three times in a row. I'm just gonna bring in Palkia, they're double debuffed, and I'm more than happy just to shield once and farm all the way down. My opponent, probably not gonna surrender this farm. So I'm expecting a switch out. They are gonna switch out into Landorus. Oh my goodness, how weak can they be in the back to Palkia if this is their switch in? Aqua Tail is going to be shielded up. They're gonna go for Sandseer, and since my defense has been debuffed, this will hurt. Sandseer does a ton of damage. I'm gonna look to over farm as much as possible with the Palkia. Palkia now pretty low, but has quite a bit of residual energy. I'm hoping that Rhyperior up a shield can just beat whatever they have in the back. So I will probably just look to blind switch out of here. In comes the Tabu Bulu. I look for the farm down and it's gonna be their own Rhyperior in the back. And I'm gonna look to connect with the hard hitting Rock Wrecker. It's resisted, but Rock Wrecker is a blast burn clone and gets same type attack bonus. So it will do more damage overall. I am going to use the shield as my opponent will go for the breaking swipe. And I'm gonna fire off a breaking swipe of my own. I believe this will be very close to knocking out, and it does. In comes Tabu Bulu, Rhyperior, getting rid of the last shreds of Bulu to ensure victory. We move to the next match, Tabu Bulu versus Xerneas. And I believe my slightly scuffed Tapu Bulu IVs mean that I actually lose, I think it's the one shield, I would have to double check. But typically Tapu Bulu can do quite well here. Like you always win the zeros, and I believe you can win the ones as well. But unfortunately, since I have 13 HP, I believe that I do actually lose Xerneas ones. Nature's Madness is going to be shielded up by the opponent, and they're gonna look for the farm now. They decide against it. They switch into Necrozma. I do unfortunately throw the Nature's Madness there, and now I bring in Rhyperior. This is gonna set up a really nice one shield farm down for the Rhyperior, as Rhyperior energy, again, just goes everywhere in this meta. Even if the opponent has a Tapu Bulu, like Tapu Bulu is amazing. I love it, it's so terrific in this meta. But even a Tapu Bulu is not gonna be a tremendous fan of having to deal with Rock Wreckers. Xerneas has the two close combats. I know I can live one, so I'm just gonna stay in here, absorb this energy. In the back is Palkia. I'm gonna fire off this Breaking Swipe. Opponent calls the bait. I'm only getting one more move, so I'm going for the Rock Wrecker. At this point, once I get the shield, I have to switch. I know that they don't have enough residual energy to make a Spatial Rend before I make the Aqua Tail. Aqua Tail may be double resisted, but in a rare moment, an Aqua Tail actually KOs a Palkia. We Dragon Breath down to Xerneas and take the win. We pick up a very negative lead in the next match, Tabu Bulu versus a quick attack Zacian. And this matchup is a lot worse for Tabu Bulu than going up against Xerneas, just because quick attack from Zacian does way more fast move damage than a Geomancy from a Xerneas. I will commit the shield, and this matchup is one reason why I do like running the Solar Beam, because Zacians really don't like shielding the first Nature's Madness, so you can land a beam, get a farm down, and they're only going to make a Wild Charge here. They don't make it to a play rough. So I do exit with energy and switch advantage. Out comes Dialga. Dialga is going to get hit with the Nature's Madness. I can't afford to stay in here, though, because if I give up a ton of energy, then, unfortunately, I'm either going to get Roar of Time on the Palkia or Iron Head on my Rhyperior. So I debuff them, I switch into Palkia, that actually forces a switch out, and now opponent is gonna bring in a Veltal as their final Pokemon. I fire off an Aqua Tail, opponent knows that I'm short of a Spatial Ren there, but honestly, that still felt pretty okay to throw. I believe I can get the farm down here, it's gonna be very close. Oh my goodness, fractional HP on a Veltal. They make the last second Oblivion Wing to pick up the KO. I bring in the Tabu Bulu, opponent is gonna bring back in the Dialga. One thing about Rhyperior, even though it does take super effective damage from Iron Head, the Roar of Time will do more. So now it all comes down to the stats of Rhyperior. Can I live a Roar of Time? The answer is yes. Rhyperior, what a beast. Tabu Bulu bullet seeds down a Veltal, and that game ends in victory. 
Hopping into the final match, Tabu Bulu versus a Charm Primarina. Good lead, Tabu Bulu is going to win everything that isn't the two shield. In the twos, you do get charmed down. Nature's Madness is going to be shielded because, of course, I could potentially throw a Grass Knot there. And I have a choice to make. If at all possible, I want to get shields down because I have a Spatial Rend user and a Rock Wrecker user in the back. So I have a ton of charge move pressure once I get shields down and I can't afford to switch out. So I'm more than happy just to concede switch. Opponent is going to pivot out into Landorus. Landorus is going to fire off the Sandsir Storm. And I'm just going to bank all this energy on Rhyperior, switch out to reset the debuff, and bring in Palkia. Palkia is going to get hit with the Sandsir Storm, but honestly, that's very okay by me. I can now look to overfarm as much as possible because I do want to leave with energy because an Aqua Tail, even when debuffed, should come pretty close to knocking out the Primarina as the Primarina is pretty low at this point. Opponent is going to bring in their final Pokemon, which is revealed to be a Veltal. I will fire off the Aqua Tail. I could have gone for a Spatial Rend here, but I want to go for a combo play. I just wanted to stall the switch timer there because I can throw an Aqua Tail, store an Aqua Tail, do a nice little combo play. They can get a farm down, but they're not winning charge attack priority. So we have a little bit of an energy management masterclass in that end game there, saving energy from earlier, sniping with it, and we're able to take the win. All in all, across the 12 games that I played with the team, I went 9-3, and, and I definitely felt like at least one of the losses was entirely Operator Error. If I played it cleaner, if I saw the win con slightly faster, then that game could have been a win. So I think Tabo Bulu is honestly just amazing in this meta. If you don't have some of the back Pokemon, there's definitely alternatives that you can run. Like, Tabo Bulu also has decent synergy with Waterfall Primarina. The only awkward thing would be is if you see a Dialga lead, you just have to stay in and double shield your Tapu Bulu to win switch because obviously Waterfall, Primarina, and Palkia, neither one is going to do well against something like a Dialga. All in all, I'm a huge fan of Tabu Bulu as a Pokemon, so having it be even stronger this season thanks to the adjustments in terms of what is now top meta is a definite plus in my book. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.